Hey. So I wanted to film a little run through of the amp because I know it's weird buying stuff online. I'm gonna turn it on. And uh, I just wanted to run through all the knobs and everything just to show how the amp functions. I'm gonna sell it um, with no return just to avoid any kind of online fraud. So because of that, I wanna run through the amp as if somebody was sitting here and, and checking it out. Cause uh, I'm an honest guy and I like selling quality stuff um, and I like to be transparent. So here it is. Uh, I just turned the power on. It's a 66 Super Reverb. It's got a master volume mod on it, which um, I'm not crazy about, but um, if you turn it up all the way, you still get the fat cleans. Uh, chimey tones that you would expect out of a super reverb. Um, the, real, the grill cloth was redone. It had some funky black grill cloth on it and I put a new logo on it. Let's just go over the basics first. Um, the, it's got a 212 configuration which is uh, unusual for super reverb obviously. The person I got it from said it had been in storage for 20 years Took me a while to figure it out, but the, these two speakers are 1968 Eminent speakers, and they have a code on the cone, which I looked up, and it has to be happens to be a Weber. Uh, the people that recone speakers, that's one of their codes, and the cones are in really nice shape. Speakers sound great. Um, it's a two ohm output. I put new full set of match J and J um, tubes in it. It hasn't been biased, but the bias is set to about 50%. I took a little peek in the little hole where you adjust it. Um, it's also got this knob on the back where the, the little made in the USA code usually is. It's usually not anything here. And I have no idea what it does. It turns, but it doesn't seem to change the sound at all. So it must be part of the master volume mod. Everything seems to be original on it. All the transformers are dated 1966, which is really cool. The inside looks pretty clean. Um, I posted a photo of the wiring, the circuit board. Um, so just so you can take a look at it, but I have a couple close-ups if you want to look at the pots. I don't think all the pots are original. It looks like a couple have been changed, but a lot of them have 1966 on it, so um, they seem to be original. Um, <clears throat> this one screw over here sticks out about half of an inch. Somebody had used a sheetrock screw to screw the baffle in, and I didn't have an original fender screw, so I just used that to hold it in place. And the baffle is made from... Um, the original fender specs of birch and maple um, with the little quarter inch frame around the edge that the uh, that the logo attaches to it. If you push down, you can kind of see the little where the frame is that goes on top of the, the thicker piece that holds the speaker. So try to make it as uh, original to factory specs as possible, even though it's a 212 cabinet. So I'm trying to standby switch on. I have a 94 Strat stock um, plugged in. I'm just gonna go through all the knobs. So um, right now it's in the normal channel. The master's up around eight. Let's see where the camera's at. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's super loud and super clean, and it sounds amazing, in my opinion. Volume, treble. sound when you switch it up. A little bit of a crackle when you pull that out. So that one does the same. That's the first one. Vibrato channel. Reverb works good. Just notice I didn't notice it till right now. When I move the bass knob, it doesn't seem to change much. On the bass. Hopefully the 
camera isn't distorting. <laughs> a new pot or something. Over. This one doesn't do anything because of the master volume mod. Um, bypass the speed and intensity. And then channel two. So that's all the basic functions. Um, I want to record playing through it and turning it up, but it's going to distort the camera, which will make the you can't tell if it's the amp or the camera. So I'm gonna um, I'm probably gonna mic it up and record it so that it's a cleaner um, sound. All right. So the exterior, it's got the original um, little stand thingies, you know. So you can do that. There's uh, some oxidation on the stands from being, you know, really old. Grab the camera. Um, there's what the stands look like. And then here's the Tolex. It's got some normal wear and tear. All this stuff seems to be original. The uh, plug seems to be original. The power plug. There's a little um, bubbling right here. It probably had some kind of water. I'll put another dampness or water. Um, it doesn't have the feet. This is sitting flat on the floor. So it doesn't have the little rubber feet, which you can get at Mojo Tone for pretty cheap. Here's the little master sticker they stuck on there. And this is um, the wood was chewed up and it's just been painted over with something so there's some exposed wood right here I think you can see that pretty good on the video and then some normal scrapes there's the other stand all original um, there's like a brown paint or something that got on there another little bubble here and the Polex and you know overall it's pretty clean it's a great sounding amp um, this had a Clash sticker on it from like 1982, and I found an, it was sitting uh, down here in the back. Here's the reverb unit. Um, and I found another sticker that um, was from San Francisco, so it had been serviced in San Francisco at one point. So um, that's a little bit about its history. I like to know where amps came from because I think that's really cool. It'd be interesting to know who played it and stuff. But um, it lived in San Francisco at one point. Here's all the other stuff. I uh, don't have a foot switch for it. I haven't tested these two out. Um, I haven't tested the external speaker because it's got a, you know, it's only two ohms. I don't want to mess with that. Ground switch and the courtesy jack on the back. Oh, and here's the little tag thing that shows that it's 1966. And that's about everything. It's pretty killer sounding amp. Um, like to find it a good home. And I uh, plan on doing a sound demo next with um, with a microphone. There it is.